Hi, it's Robin. Lately, I've noticed a couple cases where people have been making Commodore 64 tributes, but didn't quite get the details right. I'll put them on screen so you can ponder them while I rant a bit. Try to think of not only what the error is in each one, what will be the actual effect when you type these into a real C64. Now, you might not notice anything wrong, or you might even call me a nitpicker or petty for pointing these errors out. And you might even be right, but hey, the Commodore 64 made me the pedant I am today. In case you haven't noticed, computers are pretty picky about the instructions you give them, especially when it comes to programming them. A single wrong character can completely prevent something from working. When you're playing your favorite video game, one that hopefully rarely, if ever, crashes, you better be glad it was programmed and tested by a bunch of pedants and nitpickers. If not, then you should play the buggiest game you own and rejoice every time it freezes, crashes, or reboots, shouting, I'm so glad this game was not made by nitpicking petty pedants. <laughs> okay, rant over. So what we're looking at today are a couple Commodore 64 load commands that aren't quite right. One is from a t-shirt that's for sale online, and the other is a trailer for a Commodore 64 documentary film that's working on gathering funding. Now I want to make it clear that my goal here isn't to make fun of these or hate on the people behind these. But I do want 8-bit computers to be accurately portrayed, especially in something as fundamental and basic as how to load a program on the Commodore 64. But also, I do find it fairly interesting to look at why both of these are in error, and what they'll actually do when attempted on a real Commodore 64. It was educational for me, and maybe it'll be for some of you too. So first, let's look at the t-shirt. Okay, you see it says, load quote, star, quote, comma, eight, comma, one. Do you see what's wrong with it? Okay, well, here I am at my Commodore 64. Now, I see this has some lowercase letters in it. So I'm going to switch to lowercase, hold down the shift key, and press the Commodore key. That gives us the mixed case mode. Okay, so now we'll try it. L-O-A-D, quote, star, quote, comma, eight, comma, one. And to test today, we'll be using this Blue Angels Formation Flight Simulator from Accolade for the C64. Blue Angels, I remember those from Boys Summer Camp. Okay, so here we go, got the load command typed in, press return. Syntax error. So why did that give a syntax error? Okay, well I think in the manual it was always an uppercase. So let's try that, L-O-A-D, star, comma, eight, comma, one, press return still a syntax error. Well, actually, in this case, because we're in mixed case mode, we actually have to type the command in all in lower case. It doesn't handle mixed case, but also doesn't handle upper case. And I'll show you why. If I go back to the regular boot mode, which we call graphics mode, that only has uppercase letters, you can see what's wrong with the previous two commands. Load, the L looks kind of weird. That's because it's not an L, it's actually a graphics character. When we're looking at that Bjorn Schiff's album, there guys, I said Bjorn correctly this time, with the pet ski on the cover, we saw this character. It looks like an L, but it's actually like a right angle. It's a graphic character. And here when I did the all uppercase version, this is actually what it looks like. These are pet ski symbols and we get them by shifting these keys. So note when I switch between cases with these keys, I'm not actually changing all those characters, I'm changing the appearance, but what is typed in to the screen memory is exactly the same. It's actually just changing the font or the character set, essentially. Okay, so let's see if this finally works. Press return. And there we go. We've got the load command working. Load star, comma eight, comma one, is going to load the first file on the disk, the comma eight means device eight. And the comma one after that means load it into the memory location from where it was saved. So yes, I guess this is petty, but I mean, what eight bit topic isn't petty if by petty we mean unimportant? Surely if somebody's making a t-shirt to sell, 
cat, they make sure it's correct. As the C64 user's guide says at the top of page 23, the computer is precise and expects instructions to be given in a specific form. Okay, now moving on to the second item. Okay, so in the trailer it says load quote star comma one and then return is pressed. Now, what would you expect this command to do? You might think they've forgotten the comma eight that we saw in the previous example, but actually if you watch the whole trailer, it clearly shows a tape being put in a data set and a Commodore tape drive pressing play on it. So I'll press return here and you see it says press play on tape. Now I don't have a tape deck hooked up yet, so I better go get one. Be right back. Okay, I've got the data set set up. Now, thanks to anybody who's making a t-shirt or a movie or whatever, while C64 commands can seem sort of esoteric, you can simply type them in to a real Commodore or even an emulator, or, you know, you could just ask online what the correct thing is, and I'm sure there'll be some C64 nerds happy to help you. So there isn't much of an excuse for selling a product that's got mistakes in it, in my opinion. Anyway, let's try this again. Load star comma one. The comma one isn't actually a mistake. The way the load command works is after load, you provide the file name in quotes. And then after that, there's an optional parameter for the device number. Typically the Commodore 64 disk drive is device eight and the tape drive is device one. Device one is the default. So it's actually not necessary to type in the comma one, but you know, it also doesn't hurt. Okay, so let's type that in. So it says press play on tape. So what I've done is I've prepared a tape here to help show what's wrong with this command. I'll press play and here it goes. I hope this works. Well, I hope it works the way I want it to work. Okay, so we've told to load star. Now, searching for star, found a game, and that's what I called this, a game. And it might look like it's loading now, but it actually isn't, and you'll see that in a moment. It's going to pause again. Now, found plan B. Okay, it didn't load a game. Now it's found plan B and it's about an 8.5 second pause that the Commerce 64 pauses the tape deck whenever it finds a file, but it's only going to load it if it matches the specified file name. Now found C. Again, I saved all these. <laughs> so C is also a file name. So maybe you're starting to get the idea. Why isn't it loading star? Doesn't star mean load the first file found like on a 1541 disk drive? Oh, now it found a blank file name. But you see how it's not loading any of these. On a disk drive, star means load the last file loaded or load the first file on disk. It seems reasonable to think load star comma one would load the first file on cassette, but it does not. Now it's found star and finally it's going to do something. Loading ready. So let's run that asterisk E and we'll list that little program. Okay, so what I did here was I wrote five short little programs. Each one just prints out something uh, just following the alphabet, sort of roughly A, B, C, D, and E. And each time I just made it print something and I saved onto cassette with a different file name each time. So the first time the file name was called A space game. Star did not load that. Plan B did not load. C did not load. A null or blank file name did not load. Finally, it found star and loaded it. That's because I named that last file a literal asterisk, or I'm going to say star informally sometimes. That's common in C64 speak. But found asterisk, it loaded. That's because on cassette, if you tell it to load asterisk, it's going to literally 
search, I'm using this word correctly, literally search for a file named star, just asterisk. And that's what it did here. I'm just going to rewind the tape here. Now, on disk, if you say load star, the Commodore 64 does not recognize star or asterisk as anything special. It sends that to the disk drive, and the 1541 disk drive has its own processor and RAM and ROM. It has its own firmware. It's actually got its own DOS, Disk Operating System, Commodore or CBM DOS. That computer in the 1541 disk drive sees the asterisk and knows that that is a special wildcard character. It'll load the first file it finds if it hasn't already loaded one. I keep bringing that up. It's kind of a strange quirk. Now here on the lowly data set, it has no disk operating system. Of course, it has no firmware at all to interpret the asterisk as anything. The C64 kernel has all the code to interpret the load command and to operate the cassette deck. There's no brains in here. It's all up to the C64 to drive the tape deck, to read the data signal coming in and load and save and so on. The Commodore 64 has all that built in, but on any of the disk drives or on the modern SD cards or whatever have you, the C64 simply sends the commands, sends the file names, and it's up to that device to interpret things like wildcards, like the asterisk. So how do you load the first file on a cassette? Well, there's actually a number of ways. You can hold down shift, and if you press the run stop key, it will activate the load and run feature. That's why it just says run up there. Load, and then press play. found a game, and now this will load this first file automatically here. After that 8.5 second pause. So there it is, found it, it loaded it, and it ran it. And there, the result is a game. There's the program listing, or a game if you prefer. Another way of loading the next file, it's not really necessary, but you can pass it a null string like this, load quote, quote, so that's like an empty or null string. Press play on tape. Found plan B. And if you don't like that pause, you can actually press the Commodore key to go ahead and load right away. But notice that it doesn't automatically run when you just use the load command on its own. So we'll do that plan B and there's the listing. And you can even do this load quote, quote, comma one. If you want to do a relocated load so that the file is forced into basic memory, then this is how you do it. Load quote, quote, comma one. Actually, a lot of people use the space bar to load quickly instead of the Commodore key. Here, we'll do that. Found C. And I press space. It will also load right away. But you see, it does put the key in the keyboard buffer. You know, not a big deal, but that's why I like the Commodore key better. I'm going to put in my super snapshot. I'm just going to do one quick little diversion here. And this is just one related little thing that I just I actually didn't know this. If we disassemble at E4, E0, this is a C64 kernel here. What it actually does is this is the code that caused that pause. And before it gets here, it's actually already loaded in A1, which is part of the Jiffy clock. This is the middle byte. We looked at this in detail in another video, but A1, it holds the middle of the Jiffy clock. Each Jiffy is a 60th of a second in A0. So each time A0 rolls over, it's 256, so 240 would be four seconds. So it's a bit more than four seconds each time this increments. So the accumulator already holds A1. And what it does is just simply, it's kind of <laughs> really kind of cheap. It just adds two, which is roughly eight and a half seconds, give or take, and puts that in the accumulator. Then it loads Y with location nine one. Every time the interrupt fires, the stop key is scanned, but instead of only checking that key, it actually scans a whole 
column that's stored in location 91. So this is a little weird that it actually represents eight different keys on the keyboard. If there's no key pressed at all, then in that location will be FF hacks. It's almost like this is accidental because it's really looking to see if the user presses the stop key to abort the load. I mean, maybe it is by design, but it just seems a little weird. 91 will hold FF hacks or 255 decimal if none of these keys are pressed in the column. Now, me a physical column, I mean a key scan column. I'll show it on screen from mapping the C64. If it's FF, then it's incremented by one, which will make it wrap to zero. If it doesn't equal zero, it'll branch ahead and it's done. So that means any key could be pressed. It's not actually just checking for stop. If it is equal to zero, that means no key is pressed, then it's going to check the accumulator against the current Jiffy clock in A1, just waiting for it to be two bigger than it was, which would be that eight seconds, and it just branches back up here again. So it's just a small little loop for about eight seconds waiting for any key from this location 91 hex. Okay, so 91 hex is 145 decimal. So let's go back to basic here. And we'll just do a little program here to peak that location 145. So as I said, if no key in the column's being pressed, it's going to be 255. But any of these keys are in the same column. So two drops it down by eight. One drops it down by one. Back arrow drops it down by two. Control drops it down by four. And also has the side effect of slowing down the print routine. Little quality of life usability thing that Commodore put in there. Kind of strange. The Commodore key reduces it by, what, 32? And the Q key by 64. So the Q key can be used as well. And the space bar is the file key. I think I got them all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And of course, stop can be used, but it also has the effect of stopping our program. So can't really demonstrate that very well. Here, let's just do that again. So to skip the loading, I always use the Commodore key, but I've heard lots of people use the space bar. I guess they didn't read the manual. All those people just play games and never try programming, but you can use any of these keys. So here, I'm going to try and use Q. And there you see it actually did load it. Okay, and run it, and now it printed a Q on the screen. <laughs> So now you know that that load star comma one will almost certainly not load any commercial game that I'm aware of. They should just fix that either to say just simply load or if they insist quote quote comma one or if they really want to get that iconic star in there, then instead of using a tape deck, they should get a 1541 disk drive and change that device number to eight. So you don't get the wrong idea that I'm only picking on uh, t-shirt makers and C64 documentary makers. This has actually been going on for as long as the C64 has been around. I've been noticing these for years, so just show you a few more from my collection here. Steel Thunder, just a little weird how it seems like there's almost too much space around those quotes. So if somebody were to type that in, they might mistakenly put spaces around the asterisk there and that would cause it to not work. It would actually load a file with a space at the beginning of a name. Here's Electronic Arts Demon Stalker. This one isn't so much an error, but see how it says to load, load quote EA, quote comma eight comma one. I thought it was kind of clever of, of them. Load star would totally work, but this was just a way of Electronic Arts kind of getting their EA brand, uh, into people's heads by having them type it in each time. <laughs> okay, so that's not a blooper. I just thought that was interesting. Okay, this one's making the same mistake as the t-shirt with a capital L and lowercase ode. The asterisk is just so tiny there. I mean, it's not wrong. It just looks very different than it does on the Commodore 64 screen. This one, they put a period at the end. Of course, that's proper English. Funny thing is that actually works. 
because it just interprets it as 1.0, valid number, like 1. So here they go again with mix case and the load command, then quote, O colon star or asterisk, that really does look like a star with five points. That O is meant to be a zero, and that's a throwback to when Commodore drives used to have two disk drives in one unit, numbered zero and one. So if you actually put a zero there, that will still work on a 1541 disk drive, comma eight. And then it's the thing with these literal instructions. Then hit return, then type run, all lowercase. So that one's kind of a mess. Somebody who really didn't know how to load a file, how would they know where to stop typing? They tell you to type that. Then how do you know you're switching back to instructions meant for humans? And here's equestrian show jumper to load type comma, again, mixed case, load, quote, lowercase, boot, quote, and then no comma eight. So that one's pretty messy too. I was thinking one other reason why this sort of uh, demand for precision matters to me and some other people is because some of us are still, I use the word traumatized, only half jokingly here, by the experience of trying to type in games from magazines and books back in the 80s. Because we could spend hours and hours typing in a single game, and then the whole thing doesn't work just due to one typo. It's bad enough if we're responsible for the typo, you know, made the mistake, because at least then we had a chance of going over the hundreds of lines of code, hoping to find and fix our mistake. But sometimes the magazine itself had the misprint, and then you either had to try and debug it yourself or wait a month to buy the next issue to get the correction. For some of us, accuracy is a matter of survival. <laughs> okay, I hope you found some of that informative. Thanks to my patrons for their support. Thank you for watching, and we'll talk to you next time.